Welcome to Blackfeather Guild. Before we go in and say hi to the cast and get started with the show, I wanted to talk very briefly about viewer actions uh, and a little bit about sponsors. Uh, so first off, there's a number of ways that you can actually uh, actively participate in the show uh, through viewer actions. One of the easiest ways to do so is through retweeting the game tweet. Uh, you should see that somewhere in chat if it's not in there already. Uh, but you just click on that link and hit retweet. And for every five retweets, uh, that we get on that, uh, it will add a bonus to the cast pool and the game master pool. Uh, now, in most cases, that's going to be an extra d6 that they can add on to any roll. Uh, basically, uh, a great way to use that is if a, a player is uh, almost meeting a dc, but they're just not quite there, they can grab one of those d6s from the cast pool, roll that, and then add that to the roll. Basically, is how that works. Same with the GM. Um, so that's one of the easiest ways that you can participate uh, that way. Another way is through Guild Coins. That's our Twitch channel points. If you look at the uh, rainbow colored icon, it should have the uh, Black Feather Guild crest on it. Uh, it should be right below your Twitch chat box. Uh, if you click on that, it will show you all the different things that you can get with those. Uh, the biggest one being plot points. Uh, now plot points, uh, you can see an example right over here. Uh, they all work pretty much the same way. It's just a matter of how big of an impact they have. Uh, so for the example, when we've got two plot points, the player of your choice gets something moderately helpful or unhelpful. Enter any suggestions for the GM uh, into chat, or you can have the GM come up with something entirely on their own. Um, so just choose if you want it to be helpful or unhelpful to the party, um, and that's kind of how you can use them. You can throw in your own suggestions as well. Uh, how those work, one plot point is something you know, trivially helpful or unhelpful. 2 is moderately, 3 is very, and then 4 is very to the entire party. Um, so if you want to do something to help the entire party or really throw a monkey wrench in their plans, um, 4 plot points will do that. Um, so that's guild coins. And then finally we've got donations. So if you want to help out uh, with keeping the lights on in the place, so to speak, uh, there's a number of ways that you can financially contribute. One of those being uh, coffee.com slash raven or raven.rocks. Can see both of those examples down there at the bottom uh, those are the addresses to do direct donations you can also do twitch subscriptions or bits uh, those work the same way and then finally patreon we've got a patreon which you should see in chat here any second if it's not there already and uh, our bard tier patrons and higher get credits towards viewer actions every month that they can use on any show that they would like um, you just have to let us know in chat uh, how you want to spend those and then we'll 
uh, hand those out. So some very cool stuff. Before we uh, hop over to see the cast, um, one last thing to mention is a couple things on this chart here. Uh, we've already covered the D6 and the plot points, but the triple crits, what that means is you can gift uh, auto critical successes. Uh, and you can, it's triple because you get three. You can divvy those out however you'd like. Uh, you can do two to the cast, one to the game master, all of them to the game master, however you want to do it. Um, so they work much like the D6s. Uh, the cast members just grab that when they're available and they really need them and use them. So it's pretty cool. And then finally, the last one, introduce an ally or enemy NPC. Just give us a brief description of what you want this character to look like, uh, kind of their, their character concept and a name, and let us know if you want it to be an enemy or an ally to the party, and the GM will basically take that and run with it. Um, so really cool ways that you can participate. Lastly, I uh, just want to take a quick moment to mention our sponsors. If you look at the logos down below, that's who's sponsoring this episode, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, before we introduce everybody as well uh, on the next scene. Um, so yeah, check all this stuff out and, uh, and thank them for supporting us and thank you for being here and watching. Let's go say hi to the cast. Give us one second, we're going to play musical cameras and then we'll be live. One sec. All right, now we're on the right spots. Hi, everybody. Uh, I I pushed a wrong button. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're we're live uh, with our penultimate episode of Empires and Epitaphs, uh, which is very exciting. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Zan. We'll do our intros and uh, jump into it. Oh God, I'm never ready for the intros. Um, 
Yeah, howdy everybody. Uh, I'm Zan, and welcome to our penultimate episode of Empires and Epitaph, our weird little game about a city of undead trying to uh, build a community alongside the living. Uh, before we pick up where we left off last week, let's go through and let each of our players introduce themselves, where you can find them, and who they will be playing today. And we're going to start with Raven. Hi, I'm Raven. Uh, I play Bark, who is uh, a rock gnome. Um, she's loosely based off of uh, a couple of Ferengi characters from Star Trek, so she's always looking to wheel and deal and get the best uh, angle on business ventures. Um, she owns the tavern in town, and um, she's also one of our uh, plethora of rogues, um, and uh, she is a rogue mastermind. Um, so she's all about getting information and using that information to her advantage. Um, but she's uh, she's pretty friendly, uh, despite all of that. Um, then I'm Raven, I do uh, just about everything involving tabletop from design to game mastering to voice acting and art. Um, and uh, you can find me here on this channel um, just about every day. Um, and uh, absolutely every day on my Twitter, which is right below my face. Um, yeah, that's me and Bark. Hey, all right. Uh, hold on. Hi, uh, I'm Hobayan. I'm going to be playing Torino. He is a Revenant Goliath Paladin of the Rubber Chicken Order. And um, you can find me here because everywhere else I stay hidden. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And face. Hi, I'm Face. Uh, I am playing Miev, who is a half-orc um, rogue smuggler, and they're also an arcane trickster, um, and with a super bad memory. That's important. Um, and you can find me on Twitter, at GameFace, and that's it. Fantastic. Clivey. Hi, I'm Calliope, and I'm playing Lady Diatomaceous, who is a revenant who's been having a hard time keeping it all together recently because she was too happy, but I think we're going to solve that problem tonight. Um, you can find <laughs> me at Calliope on Twitter, and you can find me thinking about children and gaming and teaching middle-sized kids. And Kat. Hi, I'm Kat. Um... I play Locrian, a the ghost of a tiefling bard who until recently could not talk. Um, also a best friend and um, secret admirer, which is kind of a more recent thing, of uh, Lady Di. Also dead, also been hanging around for the last 250 years. Um, player, me. Um, from Cat, you can find me at Cat and Schrodinger, or Cat named Schrodinger in most places. Um, yeah, that's that's all the things. Excellent. And as I mentioned before, I am Zan. I am the dungeon master for this weird little adventure. Uh, I am a professional game master and uh, content creator for a whole bunch of systems out there. And if you need to get in contact with me, you can find me on my website, insanitygaming.com, or on Twitter at insanity ttrpg um and you uh can also catch me on uh raven's channel uh tomorrow um brambleberry's channel on friday and uh polish cryptid channel on the weekends i i tend to bounce around a little bit i i i, I go where folks will uh, will take me so uh let's hop back into the game then so uh, where things had left off last week, um, the uh, fashions to die for had been sieged by unknown assailants as uh, flaming projectiles rained in from the roof. What about and, curl up and die? Oh yeah, the other that's, half. oh yeah, it's it's uh, died. Yeah, it's it's more curl up and fry right now. <laughs> um uh definitely some split ends and uh yeah things uh think things were pretty tense for a moment as the party raced around inside 
uh, trying to uh, save whatever parts of Lady Di they could before the building ultimately collapsed. Uh, and uh, as the session ended, uh, we saw our resident paladin beginning his prayers, clutching onto his sword tightly as he uh, began to attempt to summon the steed of the rubber chicken. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, who would like to, uh, to bring us in tonight? I would. So <clears throat> when we last left Lady Di, she was in a lot of pieces because she didn't, um, she was in the curl up and die and fashions to die for when it got hit. And everyone valiantly ran around and found all her body parts and put her back together. And with the sacrifice of Terrence, she was brought back onto this plane. So I wanted to start with, um, I think when, as, as we start, we see Lady Di and she has, you know, Terrence is just a flaming skull. And so she has his, like his little flaming skull, like in her lap and she's looking at it, like as it disintegrates into nothingness. And she stands up and she says, Locrian, 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 come here, something terrible has happened. I, I come over there. You have put in my eyes all wrong and now they're watering everywhere. You must send them. I do that. Um, I, uh, kind of, uh, so I just came back from the ethereal plane to try and like chase Terrence down and ask him what was going on. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so I'm, I'm a little, uh, out of it. And then I, I do that. I, uh, I kind of, do I have to take them out and rearrange them? Oh, um, well, uh, we, we have just had a, uh, plot point redeemed. Uh, except it's not a plot point. Uh, Meeble has just uh, spent 20,000 guild points to have uh, Lady Die and Bark trade consciousnesses as uh, Lady Die has been brought back from the, uh, from the ethereal plane. Uh, so yeah, La Lady Di, your, your eyes <laughs> flutter just a little bit. And uh, you, you are seeing things from a much shorter perspective. Raven, can you start that five minute timer? So yeah. let me just, before you start it, let me just qualify. Am I now in Bark's body or am I now doing Bark's character? Uh, I think originally the way it's intended was uh, that, that uh, you would be playing Bark's character. But uh, I, I think that uh, Mabel wants you to... Uh, have a different body experience. Uh, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong there, Meevil. Um, but that, yeah, the, that's uh, kind of the way I'm interpreting it. The intention is for the players to to uh, portray each other's characters, but... Uh, oh, you're, you're correct, Santa. Cool. But I, I'm totally fine with this, too. Uh, five minutes started now. All right. Even worse, you've made me very tiny. I uh, Lady Di? I can't contain all my rage in this tiny body. It's ridiculous. Look at me, I'm awful. Who would want to live like this? Even and sadly. Oh gosh, and I feel all these feelings like this. Oh, it's itchy, and I'm hungry, and I'm gas. Oh, I very gassy. Oh, I'm stinky. Oh, and my hair's awful. What a tiny, awful body this is. What has happened here? This is, oh, it's awful. I'm, I sent me back to the death plane. I don't want to live like this anymore. I'm stuck in this terrible, awful, tiny body. Um, can I, can I roll a perception to see if I perceive whether or not, like, I know what just happened, or is this like? I think this would be know. insight. Yeah, I, I feel like um, Logan would, would probably pick up on that. Um, uh, I also have a question. Uh, am I put together at this point? Uh, yes. Okay. 
I couldn't remember if we ended with Lady Di in pieces still, or... Oh, uh, I, I think Gellick began to, to, put her, uh, so, to put her back together. Uh, with the 22 on inside, you are aware that it does seem to be Lady Di's voice coming from, from Bark's mouth. Oh, oh dear. Um, it's not fair! Bark is so indescribably beautiful now, and I'm stuck like this little tiny thing! Bark, currently, as um, you know that expression that people get when they're suddenly like they get water dumped on them unexpectedly out of nowhere, and it's just sort of that like standing still, going like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Uh, that's kind of the expression they're doing, though. And uh, he just looks at La uh, Lady Die now in her own body and Locrian and goes, "Whatever you did, undo, undo, fix it." Put me back. This is gross. I, well, I didn't do it. Well, here's what's really funny about this is Lady Di is becoming increasingly enraged, right? And she is, the rage against the machine is what keeps her on this plane. So the more angry she is, the more body parts are going <laughs> to bark. So I, I think Mark's just standing there, this undead body as like body parts are like, coming in and like little scraps of the like ripped up whatever you know like so I could see Mark just kind of standing there because the madder Lady Di is the more solid she is on this plane so I think that's how that would work and so she's like get out of my body and then she slaps herself I'm not slapping that beautiful thing and she's slapping herself this stupid little tiny rock no Self bad style. Stop slapping my face. <laughs> right, you, know, you know what? You know what? You know what? Fine. And uh, Bark just starts like pulling off fingers. <laughs> but they suck right back on because she is so pissed. I. It's like a magnet. And she's like. Oh. This is ridiculous! You give me my body back right now, or I will chop off your hand. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I, I'm. <laughs> I, uh, I think I need. Well, I feel like this is obviously temporary. You know what? I bet it was the Bone Lord who did this, and he is trying to fight us right now. That's... Let's go. I'm gonna roll insight to see if uh, if Bart believes that. <laughs> okay. Um, no. So twenty two. Okay. Does, does um, Bart get the sense that Locrian is telling the truth? Is Locrian telling the truth? I. I mean, I assume player wise, I assume that he is. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think um, Locrian is telling the truth as best as he can. Like, he didn't say, I know for a fact that the Bone Lord did this. He's saying, I'm pretty sure um, we're being attacked by the Bone Lord right now. And that sounds like a good place to, to assign blame. So, so I would say Locrian's being as truthful as he can be. I think and he that, believes what he's saying. Mark is going to do the the fry, squinty-eyed look, like the suspicious, mm, okay. And then as five minutes have passed, suddenly find herself back in her own body. <laughs> awesome. Going, ow, oh, my face hurts. Good. <laughs> Mine too, from having to look at yours. And I'm gonna put on my ass kicking hat and I'm gonna say, <sighs> Thank goodness. And my now, I think I'm just this like a maelstrom of like scraps of fabric and umbrellas and and anger and like, you know, battle scissors and stuff. And I'm gonna give my hand to Locrian and be like, let's go, fly us there. Um, There's no time to waste before the Bone Lord makes me a tiny, tiny being again. I'm going to, I, I want to do that. <laughs> Um, I think I pick up Lady Di and I, I bring her up high, like out of out of fireball range, because I'm also really worried about 
like I want to attack this guy, but I'm also really worried because we almost lost Lady Die just now, and he does mm -hmm. not want to like risk that again. Let's go to the top well, of the castle. Uh, while that's happening, Bark's just going to lean over to Mia very briefly and go. Next time she's in a burning building, remind me not to go in there and try to save her. Yeah, we'll and that not. was one of Raven's quips. All right, everybody, we're going to take a vote now to see if we get a scene rewrite point. Um, sorry. Right, so. Wait, what's going on? <laughs> no, 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 nothing. That was... Um, you don't I, have I, the tartar I, sauce for this job, <laughs> Bark! Says Lady Di as she flies off towards the moon. <laughs> At a mild moment of insanity there, sorry. <laughs> I was uh, like, that sounds really cool. What happened? <laughs> Did somebody spend plot points? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, mild moment of insanity. Thank, thanks there, I see. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was what that was. Um, oh, okay, yeah. that's cool. Um, so just a note about the surroundings right now. Um, fashions to die for and curl up and die are not the only places that seem to be under fire. There are other buildings that are burning at the moment. Uh, the townsfolk now, as your your numbers are a few hundred strong, both undead and living, um, and were dog, um, and one were penguin, um, are uh, kind of in the streets, seeming to panic because their town is under siege. How okay. does Sparks Tavern look? It's right across the street from Fashions to Die For. Um, hey, Bark, high or low? Uh, hi. Okay. Hi. <laughs> As this is pretty darn high. Unfortunately for you, I was rolling 2d100. Um, no, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, that'll, uh, that'll work. Uh, Bar Bark's Tavern seems to have escaped any fire, um, any direct fire at this point. Uh, seeing that other buildings are on fire, Bark is going to uh, go make sure that Bob is, you know, getting buckets of water ready and creating a, a firewall if necessary. <laughs> okay. Um, Can, are there is there more fire still coming? Uh, there there has been uh, two volleys at this point, uh, so you you might have the suspicion that. Uh, a third might be on its way. Do we know what direction it was coming from? Uh, yes, it is coming from the southern entrance of town. Okay. Um, I would like to head down there. Or go that way. Okay. Um, um, I'm going to go check it out if anyone wants to come with me. Um, could, I, uh, could I run to the tavern and just like get Bob started, and then go join me up? Uh, sure, you'll, you'll be a little slow, but uh, you can do that. Yeah, Bob, Bob um, you notice that Bob has a uh, very oddly designed, uh, like a, a belt rigging. Um, it seems to have four pouches on it. And as you say, the town's on fire, Bob, you know, kind of shambles down to the ocean, pulls a cord on all four of the belts, and sits down in the water. <laughs> I love Bob. Bob's like a one kobold uh, um, firefighter. Yeah, yeah. It's, man, it's, it's almost like artificers are one of the best classes out there. <laughs> Don't at me, except you can at me. I'll fight you on this one. Artificers are great. Um, I, yeah. Okay. I, I, I will certainly accept one of the best classes. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, yeah, so uh, Miev is headed down uh, to the, the southern entrance of town. Uh, what is everyone else doing? Torino is still summoning their steed. Um, it has been, it's, it's almost done since there was that whole five minute conversation. Um, so it, sh it should be almost finished. Uh, Lady Di, Locrian, uh, Locrian, what are you up to? We, we have to go and see what this is. This is unacceptable. It's almost tourism season. We've got to go and see what's happening here. I'm going to give that bonus piece my mind. 
I think I fly myself and Lady Di up to like the top most like like a vantage point at the top of the castle. You're going the wrong way. Can you carry other people when you fly? I feel like we had some sort of like once can, per day thing. He can cast he was holding me up. once per day. Was oh yeah, last. that's right. He yeah. he can't cast fly once a day. Okay, that's right. So don't um, land. Don't land because you can only cast it once a day. So we don't land. We're just kind of like if you get me stuck here up here on the top of this tower, I am gonna give you what for. I'm already so pissed. It's that's good. I have a catapult three times a day. Um <laughs> do it. Catacult catapult me over there. I am let's go. What do we see? Uh um, no. <laughs> so uh we'll 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 get some mad first. Mia first. Uh, so as you're running down, are you trying to be stealthy or are you uh, trying to get there quickly? Um, I think I'm like primarily trying to be stealthy, but I'm not trying to be slow either. Okay. Um, so go ahead and make a stealth check for me then. Mm, wasn't stellar. Oh good, I have a high stealth modifier. <laughs> this is 17. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, you're making your way down. It's a little slow going because you're having to uh, fight against the uh, the people rushing uh, away from the direction that you were traveling to. Um, so you're it's a, a, a little slow going, and you're trying to keep a little bit out of the uh, the main line of sight from the the main streets, um, just in case you can see anything could see you coming down. Um, and yeah, you see uh, a large armed force uh, looks to be maybe a battalion uh, it's uh, it's it's quite a good number of people and uh, at this distance you're able to pretty clearly make out a uh, about five wheeled catapults cool. uh, each one with a uh, with a burning payload okay uh, Lady Di and Locrian, as y'all have uh, uh, taken to the top of the tower, I need both of you to make perception checks. Okay. Ooh. I didn't do quite okay. as well as you, but pretty good. Still not bad. Yeah, um, yeah, off I'm in the distance, the you can see probably a dozen, maybe a few more, uh, like pinpoints of light um, that are soon uh, sent flying into the sky and rain down on the town. Uh, Wait, Di, this looks uh, dire. This looks like uh, we need help here. We can't fight this ourselves. There's a lot of fight people on the other side. I, the, what, what, do you suggest? what do you suggest? We spent like all the time we were here getting new friends to move into this, this town. Um, we've got the vampires and the mushroom people and we need to we need to. Uh, I have. I have the zoning board. You have the the um, better bu business bureau. You're you're in charge of the people. We just need to rally the people, and come up with a strategy to to do this. We could do this. You're right. You're right. Why did we? Um, why did we make friends with the were were penguin if the were penguin was not going to help us fight? Well, we would have been better friends if Bark hadn't run their cafe out of business. Well, they're so, so fine. They have the dog park. Well, all right. Dump me in the window. Let's go see the the vampires and the mushroom people. Yeah, I'm okay. gonna go be. I'm gonna go be exceedingly persuasive. All right. Sounds um, well, good. So as as this whole exchange is done, uh, Torino. 
I think you are done uh, with your summon, with your fine steed. And so I'm going to roll a 1d3. Uh, a 1 will give you a medium uh, steed. A 2 will give you a large steed. And a 3 will give you a huge steed. All right. Okay, wow. Um, and uh, as you finish your ritual, uh, the, uh, the, the gods of the rubber chicken bless you. And you see first an, an egg appear uh, in the palm of your hand. And uh, the egg cracks. You see a small rubber chicken. And it grows bigger and bigger and bigger, it's the size of a dog, the size of a lion, it's still getting a little, a little big, the size of an, of an ostrich, um, and it's showing no signs of slowing until uh, this, this chicken is probably 15 feet at the shoulder, uh, and uh, a good, uh, you know, uh, from from breast to ass, probably 10 feet. I shall name you Cluck Norris. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so, so you, you now have I a mount. I love you, Cluck Norris! <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, Bark, by this time, uh, I, I think you would be getting back from your interactions with Bob um, hey. uh, and seeing uh, a, a He'll die and having uh, um, Torino having summoned this enormous chicken. Um, I think Bark's gonna run up and just be like, I could make so many fried chicken dinners with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> no. or, or we could ride it to go help our friends. Yeah. Just saying. Uh, I feel fine. We're going for a ride. Um, Bark's going to do her best to hop onto this thing, given that she is tiny. Okay. Um, probably scrambles up a leg or something. <laughs> um, and hops on. Um, all right. So, uh, Torino, where are you headed? Uh, looking for... Mev is Mev around? Uh, Mev uh, stealthed very well, so no. No. Okay, then I am flying up towards Locrian. Uh, can your chicken fly? Um, chickens can fly. So, <clears throat> technically, oh, God. partially it depends on how old. What is how old? Where in the lifespan is this chicken? Is it a young um, chicken? Is it a full grown chicken? It's it's a uh, quasi real chicken, but is again, it, like is what it a magic of, chicken? <laughs> is it a pullet, or a, a cockerel, or is it a rooster or hen? Um, is it capable of making an airplane out of chicken coops and household items? <laughs> um, chicken run reference. It's sorry, a, <laughs> chicken sense from the guard. <laughs> Uh, it matters, Dan. It matters. God, I, I did not study for this test. It's like my worst nightmare. Yeah, you just tell me, and it because it matters. Um, it it's uh. A, Why don't a you broiler. just roll for flight? This will be easier. But you're all missing out on understanding about chickens, it's which a, is when they're young, they and they're not like fully as heavy as they can be. They fly really well, but then when they're adults, they do more of like sort of a waddle. Kind of, and then they can kind of glide. There you go. I think since this is a huge chicken, it would do more of a glide. Okay. It did um, just hatch. It's quasi real. It's quasi real. Um, it also, you, you are wearing no feathers. you are wearing heavy armor. Okay, this is all fair. Um, I'm gonna say, it, it's, are we talking more like like Legend of Zelda, where Link holds on to the chicken and sort of glides down. Right. I'm imagining more of a rubber chicken-sized chocobo. 
Yes. Okay. Then run okay. underneath them. I can't fly up to them. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, you you can see uh, Locrian and Lady Die near the uh, near the spire of the uh, of the castle. Uh, Mav, what are you doing? Um, for the fire catapult things, are there like is there like one person manning that? Is it multiple people? What's the deal there? Oh, why don't you go ahead and make a perception check for me? It's a seven. <laughs> um, man, there's a lot of people, and you're not really sure why you you came down here. Why why were you running towards the big balls of fire? Um, uh, there's there's a, a lot of folks. It looks like there's um, maybe half dozen around each one um there's there's a lot of folks here what are you doing out here <laughs> um that's the case then instead of using my new cantrip that i'm excited about i'm gonna cast fog cloud to just cover like the area just so that hopefully they won't shoot the the uh, fireballs anymore okay uh what what is the description for fog cloud it's only a 20 foot radius sphere so it probably only gets one or two of them maybe of okay. um thick fog and okay. it lasts there, for an hour uh, is there a dc check or anything nope just happens okay uh cool yeah so uh you create a fog cloud uh, is it stationary or does it move it's stationary okay um Let's yeah, do it like you, a little bit in front of, like, so if they're moving forward, they'll have a little ways into it. Yeah. Um, after they fired their last volley, they had to stop to reload. Um, but as they're reloading, you cast uh, the fog cloud spell, and there is an initial point of confusion, and I'm going to need you to make a stealth check. Um, 26. Okay. No. I'm going to say no, and I'm going to use one of my crits to make you botch. Okay. <laughs> um, um, you know, just just because it's we're, we're drawing up on near the end, and I think this will be fun. Um, through the uh, through the fog cloud, they see just uh, you you kind of forget that you're trying to hide, and you just kind of walk out, and are studying these large catapults. And uh, what languages do you speak? I think just Elvish and Common. Okay. Uh, you hear what's primarily common with uh, a little bit of a language that you don't understand mixed in. And uh, 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 the, uh, the, the voice says, one of them, do not let them escape. Um, well, can I bonus action hide? Try it again or no? Uh, you 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 would have to move to hide, um, because if you're you're just standing there. Yeah, that would um, be. Can I do that? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, that's a twenty-nine. Jesus. Um, let's, let's just let's just see. Let's just see. They're gonna have disadvantage because. A fog cloud. Well, uh, yeah, then you hear uh, more of the language that you don't understand. And uh, where'd they go? I'm going to try and wait for a minute <laughs> in my hiding spot. OK. Um, they, uh, they are moving forward. Uh, towards you to try to get out of the, I mean, not much, just enough to get out of the fog cloud, uh, where they all stop again and begin the process of reloading the catapults. 
Um, some have moved forward um, and seem to be actively searching for you. Okay. Um, can I try to head back a little bit slowly to keep an eye on them, but see if I can find my friends? Sure, go ahead and make a stealth check. Uh, it's a 26 again. Okay. Um, go ahead and just for funsies. Yeah, okay. Uh, you feel like uh, you feel like you're you're moving fairly stealthily. Um, and so we're gonna pop back over as as you move back into town. Um, we're gonna pan back over to Lady Di and Locrian. So I picture like Lady Di basically checks herself into the window where the two vampires live. Hmm. I forget what their names are. Uh, Wilfred and uh, Wilfred's buddy. Yeah. Wilfred and buddy. And and I, I'm gonna like dive in through the window and be like, stop making out, we have a city to stay. Um, they are, they, 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 they are holding mimosas and looking very surprised. Have you looked outside? Come along. What, 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 is, what is it? Well, what time is it? Above the table. I'm not asking Gilfred and Buddy. Uh, what time is it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was fairly early evening when, uh, people noticed that you weren't showing up. So I would say it's probably about 10 o'clock now. Look outside! We've got but a city to save! But we're having mojitos. Yes, well, take them with you in a to-go container because someone is putting big balls in our city and not the fun kind. Oh, have you seen the new creations of the Myconoids? This is very cool. What? Uh, and they, uh, they, they pour their mimosas into uh, uh, mycelium-based uh, to-go cups. Okay, if those if these aren't like giant death machines, look out the window. The oh. city's on fire. Well, this um, is bad. Yeah, right. Yep, you're right. So let's go kick ass. Well, 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 what about the townspeople? Where where are they doing? Well, we're going to have to get them to kick ass with us. You're uh, part of the town people. Come on. You are. You are the townspeople. Yes, but. Right now, they just are panicking on the streets. Well, go solve it. Uh, go use your charisma. Don't you have high charisma? That's racist, but yes. <laughs> no, it's not being racist. He's he's remembering from our previous encounters when you were hiding under my skirts. Uh, fine. Uh, come, buddy. And uh, they both turn into bats um, uh, and uh, fly down to the uh, to the town square, where things are admittedly getting a little uh, a little hairy. And um, they say, "Everyone, quick, come to the castle. We will take shelter there and discuss a new plan to how to for how to fight off these invaders." And people are looking at them with respect, but they they kind of keep to themselves in the castle. But uh, so the people aren't really sure who they are or if they can trust them fully. They look Lady like they're. Lady I'm going to cast thaumaturgy on you, and you, so you can make an announcement throughout the the town. All right, this is my big moment. Now um and i'm going to shout very loudly to everyone darling you must stop freaking out it's really rather gauche there's all sorts of fireballs falling from the sky and running about is making it worse we've got to save the city otherwise we'll never have another good festival everyone stop freaking out right now Uh, make a persuasion check with advantage. Oh man! Well, that was a nat one. All right, that's better. That's more like it. A twenty-six. 
Now, that one and it's still a 14 that's that's oh, terrifying that's um and you see lady die and she's like in the window of the big tower and that she's like backlit a little bit and she's looking very like she's got you know her crown on and she's looking very like heroic mm -hmm. and better than she's looked in a long time because she is pissed and she's like, everyone come to the castle and we will sort all this out right now. The nerve of some people to come along and ruin everything. And it's white day. And so everybody's outfits are gonna look terrible with all this soot. Now come on into the castle immediately and stop freaking out, help your neighbor. Did you know white day is a holiday in Japan? I did not know that. It is, it is. Um... It is the the day for uh, all the for for uh, for women to give uh, chocolate to boys that they fancy. That is not what you are missing the point. <laughs> right now, we are saving the city, and we will give each other chocolate another time if there's a chocolate shop left. Yeah, uh, the chocolate shop is called Dark Magic. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, and the people begin to quickly organize and move their way into uh, into the uh, into the castle, um, being ushered in by the Mykonoids. Um, Hildion, uh, you and Bark uh, are, are able to hear Lady Die, uh, but can't quite make out everything that she's saying. You understand that is very charismatic, um, but that's about it. And turn to Bark and go, did you get that? Uh, she's, um, <clears throat> I mean, you know how Dai is. She's probably squawking about uh, getting people into the castle or something. Should we go to the castle or should we go check out the lights? Um, we should probably meet up with them. Maybe they know something and then we can, you know, um, go into whatever we're going to get into together. Okay. Uh, it is it is around this time, uh, uh, Miev, when you see uh, Torino and Bark, uh, do you break your stealth? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to okay. go straight um, to him. So it's around this time that you see uh, Miev approaching. Hop on. We're going to the castle. Yeah, all right. And then we're gonna head to the castle. Okay. So everyone uh, makes a tactical uh, retreat into the castle, and um, uh, you uh, you all find yourself inside. Things are very different from the last time you were in the uh, the lower floors. Um, it is a, a lush forest of vegetation, or uh, fungal vegetation at least. It is uh, very well lit um, due to all the illuminating fungus. Um, there's uh, almost what seem to be like almost pomegranate looking fruits hanging from the ceiling. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a really nice little shindig they've, they've got here. They've got a lot of uh, plants that have formed their way into, uh, into chairs and into hammocks. It's a an aesthetic, but not a bad aesthetic. I feel like Locrian's really at home here. I think up until Locrian could talk, um, like the Mykonoids were the only people he could really have a a regular kind of conversation with, because they speak um, telekinetically or telepathically. Um, yeah. I think like so Locrian's thought here might be um that he wants to talk to a strategist of the Mykonoids to kinda like that's probably what he's doing right now. Okay. To try and um, like look at the zoning and see how how we can use the city's defenses to our advantage. Okay. Um so why 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 don't you go ahead and make a general intelligence check? Do you have, are you trained in history? Um, I'm trained in, in the zoning of the town. I know how it's 
I know like the the layout of the town like the back of my hand um and i've probably also worked with the micanoids to to zone things we'll say you can make an an intelligence check with advantage sweet Seventeen. This is why I need help from the mycanoid. <laughs> Those dreadfully intelligent <laughs> mushroom people. Um, uh, yeah, they they have some suggestions. Um, they, you know, you you are reminded that they have carved out most of the underneath part of the most of the subterranean aspect of the town. Uh, um, and uh, there, they have passages and tunnels going most places, uh, and uh, they they have some fortified uh, defensive places, and enough stockpile material for uh, quite a few people to survive for for some amount of time. Um, Excellent. Yeah, it's around this time that after everyone else is inside and uh, trying to to calm down. Um, a singed and scorched Mark skeleton walks in, uh, and it's it's Bob. He goes, yeah, they were, uh, they they were. Uh, I I ran out of water, and there's a lot of places on fire, and I was getting burned. So, I'm kind of done with that now. Well, I mean, I made the right decision. Uh, if you if you look out, you notice that the, uh, the there are portions of the town that are visibly flooded at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and I um, how's the bar? And gives him a big kiss and says, "You are a delight." And when we solve this problem, we will put a giant statue to you right in the town square. Oh, that would be great. Can it like be a fountain? Sprays rum moss. I. I like this. Um, but more importantly, you have to tell us, what did you see? I mean, other than the fire and the flooding and all that. Like, what, like, can you tell us about our enemy? And Mark, enough about the bar. If we can't solve the enemy, it's just going to burn down flat. I, I didn't see anything. I saw a lot of smoke and a few fishes. <sighs> and, and what about the bar? Uh, the bar is okay for now. I, I flooded it, so. Okay, good. <laughs> Water I can, um, I can fix. Fire is another matter. Uh, ma'am, why don't you go ahead and make a uh, wisdom saving throw for me? Yeah, I anticipated that. It's not great. It's a nine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, I don't remember much. I'd say like maybe there's just there's a lot out there, a lot, a lot of things. Okay. No uh, more that is the information you get. You get to me of. This just won't do. This will not do. Everyone, come over here. This is not, we can't just go around being afraid and not knowing what we're doing. We have to send someone out to, who actually can get some idea of who we're fighting here. Because otherwise, if we just stay in this castle the whole time, first of all, I don't like that at all. I'm too mad. And second of all, if by the time we get this all sorted out, the whole town will be burned down. And then where will we be? All stuck in this castle. I think I look up from like maps and strategizing and I look at Lady Di and I say, what do you think it looks like I'm doing? You don't need to take that tone with me. I'm not talking about you. I'm small, I'm hard to see, and I'm pretty good at reading lips. So maybe I can find out. Also very gassy. I would take under consideration some Beano. Just saying. You know, you don't exactly smell like a rose garden all the time either. But don't I don't think I would just go be a rogue. Um, I want to cast invisibility on Bark if she's going out there to scout. Okay. <laughs> um, it lasts for an hour. 
So, all right. Until you attack uh, or cast a spell. So, Bark, why don't you go ahead and um, and make uh, a uh, go ahead and make a stealth check for me. And please roll a uh, oh, stealth check with advantage. Okay, so twenty-two uh, on the stealth check. Okay. Uh, and then I do have observant feet. So if I can see a creature's mouth while it's speaking a language that I understand, I can interpret their words by reading their lips. And I know uh, goblin, sylvan, undercommon, thieves, ant, halfling, gnomish, and common. Hello. Okay. Uh, you can make out not everything that they're saying. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check for me, too. I, I was built for this task. Uh, 15. Okay. Um, the of three. <laughs> you want to use a d6 on that? Uh, yeah, I think I do. Uh, a 19. 19. Okay, that'll do. That'll, that'll change things a little bit. Um, so uh, yeah, you're you're able to uh, see that there are um, kind of uh, larger, more imposing figures that uh, are obscuring themselves with wings. Um, uh, as in, they have like two wings covering their feet, two wings covering their face, and are held aloft by two wings. Uh, and uh, there's a few of these figures, and you can't quite uh, see... You, you can't make out what they're saying, because you can't see their face. Um, uh, there are uh, humanoid figures that you recognize, uh, the paladins of the rubber of the uh, of the rubber ducky. Uh, you recognize a few of them and a few people in similar armor. Um, and as these paladins are speaking to the winged figures, you cannot make out what they are saying. But when they turn to speak to um, what seems to be just like rank and file militia. Uh, you can make out that they're giving orders to move into the town. Uh, I also use Insightful Manipulator. So uh, that's if I spend at least one minute observing or interacting with another creature outside combat, I can learn certain information about its capabilities compared to my own. Uh, since the DM tells you if the creature is your superior or inferior in regard to two of the following characteristics of your choice. Uh, int wisdom or charisma score or class levels, if any. <clears throat> okay. Uh, also says if the DM's option, you might also realize you know, a piece of the creature's history or one of its personality traits if it has any. Uh, so uh, okay, which, which figure are you going to study? Uh, I would like to know the class level and the uh, wisdom score of uh, of what I'm what I'm, I'm observing, whatever it is. Uh, of one of the winged figures, one of the paladins, or one of the militia. Oh, uh, the the winged figures. Okay. Um. So it has no class levels. Okay. Um. And the wisdom. Yeah, if the uh, wisdom score is higher, uh, lower, or the same as mine. And uh, what is your wisdom is, score? Uh, mine's 16. Okay, give me just one second. Uh, it is higher. Higher, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let, let, me, let me just double check that it has no class levels. Um, yeah, it has no class levels. Okay. I think, um, with that, I'd like to go try to listen in on the rank and file and see what they're saying. See if any of the, like, 
low-ranking uh, soldiers are muttering or complaining about things that I might need um, some information from. Okay. So uh, are you wanting to use that ability again? Uh, uh, yeah, that would be great if I can. Sure. Uh, does, that, does it list how many times you can use it a day, or is it just a... Uh... No, it's just a, as long as I observe them for a minute. Okay. Um, uh, and you're observing just the uh, the rank and file militia. Yeah, I want to look for like specifically the the lower rank soldiers to see if they're uh, if they're complaining to each other about things. Um, so, as the grunts often in these types of stories. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, go ahead and make a, an. Mm, we'll go ahead and make an insight check. All right. Uh, 14. Uh, it seems like they're doing their job. Maybe their heart isn't entirely in it, but they're not actively uh, rebelling or anything. Um, sure. And we'll say the, the one that you're studying in particular, what are your questions about? Uh. Uh, again, class level and um, probably wisdom score as well. Uh, this this one has uh, three levels in fighter. Okay. And has less wisdom than you. Okay. Fantastic. Then uh, I will go back and report. <clears throat> okay. So I'll go back and relay everything that I just found out and mentioned the fact that there's, um, I think there's um, one of those things, uh, what do you call them? Uh, seraphim? They, they, they've what? got lots, lots of wings. Oh dear. How many of them are there? How many did I see? I uh, say from your time investigating, you probably would have seen four. Um, so I saw four. There, I, there could be more, but I can confirm at least four. Uh, and one of them looked like the uh, seraphim that was chastising the uh, paladins of the rubber uh, ducky that fell into the vat of sloppy joes. Holy Joe's. <laughs> yeah, that. You could tell by uh, the distinct odor that still clung to the feathers. <laughs> uh, it's a bark will just relay that information as well. So, did you find out who was in charge of this? Uh, looks like the Order of the Rubber Ducky. What? Don't tell, don't tell Lady Di. I told her it was the Bone Lord. Well, who's to say Lady Bone Di, Lord's what's your passive them? perception? Uh, <laughs> let me look. It is... Ah, uh, uh, 15. No. Yes, 15. Uh, you hear Lady Di. I'm used to it. I think I'm also going to say loudly, um, and can you believe that all of this was under the direction of the Bone Lord? <laughs> the 24 well, like, deception. Jesus. <laughs> um, I knew it! Uh, if you want to, you can make an inside check, Lady Di. No, it's fine. Okay. Um, so I think Lady Di is sort of going around and trying to really be very, like, calming and talking to people and, like, sort of being encouraging, you know? That's sort of what she's into right now. Okay. I think, um, well, Locran's kind of sticking to, to trying to, to develop strategy and ideas and talking to different people and finding their strengths and weaknesses and, you know, figure out where best to place them, um, what kind of jobs they can do, 
Like there's definitely people who are not fighters and their job is to like take care of other people who are not fighters or take care of fighters that are um, gonna get hurt. Um, mm -hmm. And there's people who are fighters that can fight and there are people who are um, saboteurs who can do sabotage, things like that. Yeah, well, Bob, is, Bob is definitely nearby as soon as you mentioned sabotage. Well, and I think Torino, oh, Torino is probably a good person to like. Should we, should we talk to them? Should we see what they want? Is that sporting? Should we send Torino out there to have a conversation? I mean, is that, that might be a bad idea? Let's ask Torino though. Torino, darling. Yes. Sir. You darling Clementine. Um, there's some of those paladin types, those rubber ducky paladin types out there, and they're just, uh, it's rather gauche, but they're destroying the city. And so I was hoping that maybe you knew some like paladin, mm, sort of like, uh, you know, etiquette, that you could go out and have a little chat with them in case they'd make a wrong turn or something. Absolutely. And you he's going to turn to Cluck Norris and tell Cluck, ah, it's time for an egg for an eye. And start taking down the pomegranates and just shoving them into his mouth. Because he's a giant rubber chicken. So if you deflate mm -hmm. him enough, you can fire pomegranates at them. <laughs> I hope you have really, really, um, like, good thigh strength so that you can just yeah. sort of, like, squeeze squeeze them as you, you know. Crush so. watermelon with those thighs. That's right. Well, Chuck Norris certainly could. Um, so how many of these pomegranates can I fit down into the mouth is the question. Because he's massive, right? Uh, he, he is uh, technically huge, yes. Huge. Okay. Yep. So how many can I fit, do you think? Uh, just in his mouth? Well, uh, up until, like, the squeaker. <laughs> um, you know, I'll say a half dozen, maybe ten. Okay. Um, it definitely looks comical, though. It's not entirely able to close its mouth. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> because it had so much gravitas before. It was a noble and majestic steed before. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Torino will start riding out towards them. Okay. Wait, do you think um, would Wilfred and or Buddy have any like insight towards um, these people? They they are still working for the Seraph. Then it is possible that we can negotiate with them. I would recommend flying under a white flag so they do not mistake this as uh, a, a, a challenge. I well, am usually able to, white usually day. Willing to negotiate. It's white day! And she just rips off half of her skirt and gives it to Hell Diane. I and mean, it's not exactly white anymore. It's a little on the like gray side, but it's white day. Just take my skirt. It's fine. Um, okay. I'm wearing more clothes underneath. I swear. Still got the leather cat suit. I, I, I always have the on. leather cat suit. He's so if confused. You, um, he just tries to put it on. No, no, like you wanna, fly it. If you want to gotcha, swing gotcha. by the bar on your way over there, uh, under drinks? the counter on the left side behind the bottles of uh, the cheap stuff, there's a box with chocolate. You can take it with you. That's a good idea. Okay. In the spirit of white everything. Countertop. <laughs> okay. So, uh, is that what you're going to go do, Torino? Sure, I'll grab the chocolate. Okay. So you stop by the bar, which is um, thoroughly saturated, um, hyper hydrated, you might say, and uh, right off into the uh, the hail of uh, raining miss of raining fiery missiles and that is gonna be where we take our break tonight.
Uh, so yeah, Love it. thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for hanging out with us for everyone. We're gonna take a real quick like five to ten minute bio, and I'm gonna pass the reins over to Raven. All right, yeah, we'll see you in about ten minutes. So be sure to hydrate, stretch your legs, grab a snack, uh, all that good stuff, and we'll be right back.
Hello, everyone, and thank you all so much for hanging out with us through that break. We are back with the second part of the penultimate episode of Empires and Epitaphs. So, uh, yes, where we left off before break, uh, Torino Unko was uh, mounting up his uh, newly pomegranate mm, fungus filled steed and uh, was marching off white flag in hand to meet the invading force. Is it possible to sneak or try to stealth my way up within, uh, I don't know. Uh, like... Let me look at a thing real quick. Um, uh, okay, sure. A war ostrich, that sounds fine. Um, uh, okay, so go ahead and uh, roll a d20 and add one uh, for your stealth check. I don't know if that rolled it here. I don't think it did. What'd you get? Uh, 17. Okay, uh, well, solidly... Uh, solidly stealthy. Then, uh, uh, the word then it would be an 18. Okay. But. Um, sure. Uh, so you, uh, you, you feel pretty confidently stealthy as your, uh, war ostrich, not war, as that was, that was the stats I was looking at, uh, as your, uh, giant quasi-real, uh, rubber chicken, uh, marches its way through the burning town. Um, okay. And uh, as you uh, kind of creep along, uh, taking the, uh, you know, using a little bit of the burning cover for uh, the burning buildings for cover and keeping to the smoke where you can, since you don't have to breathe. Uh, yeah, you uh, eventually come across the, uh, the, the, the invasion force. And it's a lot. Um. I do speak celestial, chicken, common, giant, and infernal. Okay. So I don't know if that helps me understand anything that's going on. Uh, or why don't you go ahead and make things. a perception check for me? Oh, that's probably not going to be very good. Uh, how, how close are you going to get? I'd like to try and get within 10 feet of the celestial, or the celestial beings there. Uh, still trying to keep... Uh, so within 10 feet, we'll be behind the rank and file. Okay. Um, so, uh, what's, uh, what's, what's on your mind while you're doing this? If I can get close enough, I can cast Magic Circle. And as long as the Celestials are within 10 feet of each other... I can trap them inside of the circle. All right. Uh, as you uh, as you begin to approach, um, you see uh, one of the celestials po point their hand out in your direction as you're still about sixty feet away, and uh, the uh, the forces stop and draw their blades. Cool. Um, so that one's not going to work because <laughs> it takes a minute to cast. I feel like <laughs> you should know, you would have some like general, you don't, I mean, don't they teach like parlay in paladin school? I feel like the rub, the, the school of the rubber uh, chicken might've been a correspondence course. It was like homeschooled. Did at uh, your own pace, and I made second grade. Um, <laughs> okay, so there is a large group. Uh, I guess I'm going to wave the skirt above my head and just walk right out. All right, make a uh, persuasion check. Uh, 
Uh, okay. Let's get them. Uh, I'm going to be nice, and I'm going to gift you a d6 on that. Okay. I am. I am nice, man. So that is going to be a uh, 19 total. Um, okay. And they uh, keep their arms, uh, they, they keep their weapons drawn, but are not actively approaching you. All right. I'm going to go hail and well met in Celestial. Uh, inside your mind, you hear uh, a voice respond to you in, in Celestial and say, who are you who turns your back on the, uh, on the celestial path? I am a paladin. I am Torino of the paladin order of the rubber chicken. One of those, the unclean. I used to be a rubber ducky until they abandoned me and left me for dead. What sin did you commit to be abandoned? Protecting those of the Order of Rubber Ducky. Make another persuasion check. Can I roll a d6? <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's a three. That, that's probably not great. So it's a 15. 15. All right. Um, uh, the, the voice in your mind goes, we would not abandon our own for protecting our own. You did 300 years ago. Why do you stand in the way of us cleansing this town? This town does not need to be cleansed. This town is full of good people who were cursed by the Bone Lord. This town is riddled with undead, unholy abominations, unions of the living and the dead. And yet they get along. They live in harmony without hurting each other. Does that not show more compassion, more grace and love than you yourself? It shows a willingness for those who reside here to work with evil. Complacency towards evil is evil in of itself. Agreed. And that is why I stand between you and these good folk. Your soul is not corrupt. You may join us if you wish, but this town will not stand. Well, let us come up with a plan then, together. You are a servant, are you not? I you was follow our direction. I was a high rank, and I know the town better than you. Then you will be a good asset for us to cleanse the evil from here. So what if I draw you a map? of where they are hiding. We would spare you. All right, so, Torino's gonna ride up close and while he's drawing a map, 
to a completely different area of the town. Under Go ahead and breath. make a deception check with disadvantage for me. Oh, crap. This is going to hurt. <laughs> that was almost not terrible. Yeah, almost. <laughs> uh, just a reminder, we do have two crits left, and this is the next to last episode. W would you be okay if I used a crit? Is everyone okay with that? I'm totally yep. okay with that. Okay. Uh, so if you use a crit, then uh, it will uh, stand there silently as you draw a map. And under my breath, I will cast magic circle trapping celestials inside uh okay let me let me look at the spell real quick like it takes one minute so i draw slow um do, 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 do. um Uh, you're going to have to make a sleight of hand check for me on that. Yeah. Be good, be good, be good. Yay. Um, as you, uh, as you're drawing, I assume you're drawing a map on the ground and trying to integrate the spell into that? Yes. Okay, uh, as you be, as you're about halfway through it, uh, you sense a uh, presence in. Uh... So I'm, I'm gonna let you in on some, give you a little peek behind the DM screen. Uh, this thing has a passive perception of 23. Okay. So if you wanna use a D6, you might be able to get past it. How many D6 do we have? We have three D6 left. Might as well do it now. Yeah, good point. Wish me luck. That's a two. Oh. Yep. Brutal. Um, okay. <laughs> As you're uh, as, as you're writing the symbols out, uh, you hear the the voice in celestial in your mind screams, "Traitor!" And then uh, from the uh, from the the uh, face hidden by wings, you hear, "Seize them! They speak lies." Okay, so as a bonus action, shield the faith. Okay, I'm guessing I'm getting hit. <laughs> Draw faster. <laughs> uh, so that raises my armor class by two. Okay. Um, and let me see what I got. Uh, um, Wishing Bart had gone had gone with him now. <laughs> yep. Same. Uh, let's see. I guess I'll just draw my sword. <laughs> Take a swing at the closest paladin. Uh, give me just one second. I'm 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 reading things. Okay. Uh, what are the rest of us doing in the meantime? Are are we able to like see what's going on, or are we just sort of stuck up in the castle? Uh, Y'all are in the castle. It's it's a good probably half mile mile between where these events are taking place. So if y'all want to figure out uh, what y'all are doing in the meantime, that's okay. Yeah, so I think um, 
I want to get the head mushroom person, mm -hmm. um, Mykonoid, and bring them over to, I want to join, I guess, um, Locrian and them and say, darling, I think the first issue is these big catapults. Um, you have so many tunnels. Do you think we, we could open one up and have them fall in? Or um, is there something we could do? I mean, you have so many interesting things here that you've made. We could potentially burrow under them and come from the mat behind or surround them. Well, I was just thinking, even if we just were able to take out the catapults, that would be a start. But I like what you're saying too, Logria. Yeah. So does Locrian know a lot about Seraph? Uh, go ahead and make a religion check for me. Uh, that's a 17. Okay. Um, you're familiar with them. Uh, they are uh, a kind of celestial generals. Not gods um, of their own right, but uh, those who enforce uh, the tenets of other celestial beings. So, as, as a player, I look them up, and I, <laughs> but I also don't want to like insert things um, that I, as a player, know, but my my character doesn't. So, um, I'm going to say Locrian's like scared shitless of trying to fight these guys, especially since he is still not healed from saving um, Lady Di from the burning building. Okay. So like yeah, so I guess like the the TLDR on that is like um, Locrian is scared shitless of these guys. Um, because he's not entirely sure how we're going to make this happen. So what's everyone else's reaction to this news? Um, well, it sounds like it's either us or them, so... I, I vote we just get rid of them. There's a lot more of us than there are of those people. So, Zam, what did the Myconoids say about the tunnel underneath um, where they're at? Do the, is there a tunnel under where they are? Uh, there, there's uh, a network of tunnels throughout almost the entire town. So you, because you haven't been out there personally, you don't know exactly where they are, but you can imagine worst case scenario, there is a tunnel close to them. What if we had like a, a clever ruse, like we could send Bark out and maybe sacrifice her for the good of everyone. Um, and, and she could, she could like get them to come forward and we could get Bob to fill one of the Myconoid tunnels filled with water and so when they pulled over it they could fall in yeah, the into the oh, pit. God, How does that sound everyone? So counter proposal. I mean it would be sad if you died, but it is a sacrifice I'm willing to make. <laughs> what if we sent in the very loud, distracting one, who's already dead, to be the distraction and draw everyone out. Well, you're this the clever rogue, dear. Exactly, which is why I'm coming up with a far better plan than you did. I'm the I'm the inspiration to the masses. What better target for uh, our enemies to go after? You only want to do things that are best for you. And you never want to do things that are best for everyone. And this is your chance to show that I'm wrong and we could put a statue of you next to the one of Bob. But we can't just have it be that I do everything. 
around here. Oh, we can, but then I'm going to rub it in forever. But see, if you're the distraction, then I, who am already very hard to see, can go in and stab all of them in the butt. Not more convincing. Well, we can figure out the fine details later, but what do you think of the overall plan? What are the... What is the myconoid? What do the myconoids think of using their tunnels? Uh, myconoids are amenable to it. That's they're kind of just using the tunnels to grow stuff now. Um, they do most of their living and frolicking in the castle. I mean, does this seem like a reasonable plan to people that we would are the are the tunnels big enough? Tunnels are very big. Some what if some we are... take bikini bottom? and move it somewhere else. That would take a, a very high strength check. Are you wearing a bikini, Logan? <laughs> uh, yeah. You, 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 you try to shove the castle wall and wind up just falling through it. <laughs> That was well worth the roll. Do you think the myconoids can like dig in the tunnels and the things will fall through? Is that the plan? That that seems like a good plan. Uh, that's it's did, like a, a a pit trap filled with water. They're all heavy. That sounds great. We just need to. So Go back to the drawing board on the distraction part. Now it's just the normal spawn. I'll do it. Do it fine. Well, I was really just suggesting you because you were being a bitch and uh, I needed to get back at you for it. But mm. I have a better idea. One that doesn't no. involve anybody dying. Well, I don't none of us to... dying. Okay, then go die. I, I have already done it once. I'll do it again. Um, I have a plan think... that, you know... Lucrin absolutely bit. pushes back against that idea. Um, nobody needs to die, and uh, why don't we just... We don't need to draw them out. They're already out. We can just tunnel underneath them. Where they are. Torino's already distracting them. It's great. Could we send, like, another group of people out to, like, maybe attack them from behind? Like get out from the tunnels that way uh at that suggestion your uh your smuggler friends um Miev, who are in town ago uh well, who who is the elf again gilmary gilmary goes i think we could make that work that's not too hard we're uh experts at getting in and out and the job done and uh, as little mess as possible didn't we have a giant were penguin? I mean, that's a hell of a distraction. That's a that's a hurting distraction. Well, really hurt them into place. Yes, and if we took if we asked the little the were dogs, the adorable were dogs, to go in the front of, they could make really big eyes and be so adorable and, and sort of out of place that I think would make everyone stop and be surprised. So we're going to hop back over to Torino real quick, having just cast uh, Shield of Faith. Uh, much to my uh, chagrin, I thought that would make his steed disappear, but it did not. <laughs> um, I thought some fine steed was a concentration spell, and I was mistaken. Um, darn um uh yet yeah, you are uh being uh uh kind of surrounded um uh by these uh kind of rank and file uh, uh militia members um Uh, dude, 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 dude. Um, um, okay, so I need you 
to uh, how are you trying to resist being captured, Torino? You're muted, good sir. And shout to Clef Norris an egg for an eye now. And squeeze to shoot out the pomegranates. Um, okay, go ahead and roll a d20 plus, uh, what is it? A d20 plus one. That's a nat 20. Nice. Very nice. Uh, yeah, so yeah. go ahead. Roll damage for that. Uh, so yeah, that, uh, that takes out a few of them around you, uh, and, uh, buys you a little bit of space. Uh, let's see, I'm going to dismount, send Cluck Norris back to the castle while I end up using the longsword and taking a swing at I don't know. Uh, Celestio. Okay, go ahead and make an attack roll for me. 15. Let's see if that hits. Uh, that is not going to hit, unfortunately. Uh, you can make a second attack if you want. You are I'm going to 19 will hit. All right. It is the magical sword. Yes, it is. Uh, and it would be one-handed, though, as I have my shield. All right. Um, and yeah, you uh, you slice uh, into one of the wings, and uh, the the beast, sc- the, the celestial screams. Um, uh, and it's going to... Uh, hmm. How are we gonna do this? It's going to uh, uh, hold out its hand and perform a kind of crushing motion. And I need you to make a charisma saving throw for me. DC seventeen. Nice. Okay, so you're gonna take half damage. Okay. Uh, so you'll take one point of damage, and uh, as as kind of the forces from outside begin to like shift your armor into weird places, uh, but that's all, uh, and you are still able to move. And Cluck Norris uh, scurries away, leaping directly overhead of the rest of them, uh, and. Uh, running back to the castle. All right. Um, I will now need you to make an athletics check at disadvantage. Okay. Okay, uh, and uh, it takes, uh, you know, you, you, you stand your ground and fight valiantly, but it's just a, uh, it's a matter of numbers. Um, as you stand there, you uh, take a few of the rank and file down, wound another paladin, but eventually you are overwhelmed and find yourself uh, uh, bound and restrained at the feet of the Celestials. Uh, and we're going to uh, hop back over to the group inside the castle. So I'd like to think that we um, maybe stopped squabbling and got the Mykonoids and Bob to go down and start the plan. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think so. Uh, I think after a little bit, uh, Bark's probably like, you know, we haven't heard from... Um, Orino in a, in a little bit. Um, 
this place have like an observatory or something? Uh, do you should probably like check, make sure they're okay. Yeah, um, so how long is it until we see Cleck Norris? Uh, Cleck along? Norris is probably uh, returning about this time. Cleck Norris is incredibly fast and incredibly so, big. I'm gonna look up I'm gonna look at Cleck Norris and I'm gonna say, What is it, Cleck Norris? What is it? Is, is Torino in a well? Is Torino to don't steal my shoes, Logan? <laughs> uh, what language I does shout? does does Cluck Norris speak? Cluck Norris speaks one language that you can speak, Torino. Well, one language more than I can speak? One language that you can speak, only one. I just rolled a 21 I on insight. Or 22 on so. insight. I don't even need to hear him talk. <laughs> I just um, know. I yelled to him in common, so. Okay, so yeah, Ch Ch uh, Cluck Norris can speak common. Um, Cluck Norris just comes up to me and clucks and I say, Cluck Norris is telling us that Torino was trapped in a well or was captured by the Seraphim. One of those two. You should I'm kidding. probably- I'm kidding, he was just taken by the Seraphim. <laughs> we should probably get out there then, huh? Well, I. This is what we have to. We have to go with the plan, though. Uh, sacrifices must be made, and I don't mean that in a mean way to Torino. But we have to. If we're going to have them, like we, we have to make sure that they're in the right place so that they can go into the pit. Um, all of the uh, the the dogs and and penguins and stuff are in the castle too right uh yeah yep mark's gonna go talk to the the penguin the, the one that turned into a giant were penguin yeah the turtle yeah the turtle that turned into a penguin yeah that's right um mark's gonna go over there and be like hey um so you think you could help us out with this plan by you know, going where torino is and run, 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 giving him some help while we you know, push them into position from behind yeah, sure. Could probably do that. And, um, oh, Green, you said you had some sort of catapult spell? Uh, I do. It, it does not, it's not compelled catapult. It is just, it's a yeet, it's a yeet spell. What if we yeeted our, our turtle friend here and, uh, and, and you changed in midair and landed on the seraphim. Uh, Locrian, you would know that catapult only works for five pounds of materials. Yeah, uh, so it only works for five pounds of materials. That's not a catapult, that's a, that's a seesaw. What you're thinking of is a trebuchet. And yeah, we're in a castle, do they have any of those? Um... <laughs> Who are you asking? Everybody. <laughs> um, this is like an open question to the room. Did the Bone Lord have trebuchets? Uh, oddly enough, yeah. <laughs> Try bone shays, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, those would be up on the parapets, would they not? Mm hmm. Or the ramparts? So let's just launch a giant were penguin at them. They, they won't see that coming. Or at least they won't. Well, I'm sure it. they will see it coming, but they won't have expected it. <laughs> um, I mean, we're not casting invisibility on the were penguin, are we? We can cast invisibility on the were penguin. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. I, I want to go too. I, I no, was you going don't. to. Yes, I do. I, I, this is it. I want to do, uh, I am really good at deception and performance and persuasion, and I'm going to do something really dramatic. While How are you at surviving impact at terminal velocity? I have a bath umbrella. I opened the door for it. Mary Poppins. Okay, have fun. Oh, God. Um, Come with me, Locrian. 
so this conversation I'm imagining is happening uh, on the parapet, on the on the parapets with uh, with the trebuchets, correct? Probably, yeah. yeah. We, were, we were probably like walking and talking as as we're planning this. Uh, who has the highest passive perception? Oh God! Probably me. Not me. Uh, mine's, mine's twenty-two. Uh, <laughs> mine, mine's fifteen. Uh, twenty-two. Uh, observant. Pat is... Meeple, that's absolutely hysterical. Like hand throw <laughs> feet. Like <a> <laughs> <laughs> wow. I uh, I like it. Oh, I like it a amazing. lot. Um. Uh. uh yeah, so, uh, Bark, uh, you were the first to notice that descending directly above from, uh, from above you is a large winged shape. Did they have a were penguin too? Bark's just gonna point that and go, Oh, the trebuchet, quickly! <laughs> um... Does anyone know how to load a trebuchet? I sure as hell don't. Is well, anyone proficient with martial weapons? We've been doing book club yes. for 234 years. We probably read something about trebuchets in 234 years of book club. Oh man, it's a shame Cody is not here. Uh, I, I do have a question that comes back to me though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not proficient with martial weapons. Well, I got as a hand crossbow. <laughs> I, I'd like to roll insight to see if I can figure it out. Uh, insight, uh, that, that would be more of an intelligence check than an insight check. Uh, insight is for discovering reasoning behind something. Uh, it's, it's an inanimate object. The reasoning behind trebuchet. Uh, we're going to call that uh, either a history or intelligence check. I'll, I'll be nice and give you history if you're trained in it. Um, no, I'll do intelligence. Okay. It's an 18. I was going to try to help, but it's, it's an 8. Um, Just get in there and uh, the lever. This big lever that says pull. Let's try that. Get in there quick, quick, quick. Pull the lever, Crunk. <laughs> Should I go? Uh, Should I go with them? That guy, the, the thing is descending. What do you think? It is descending from directly above you. It is landing gonna, on my head. Can I, can I, um, um, cast detect thoughts on it? Uh, sure. What's the D, what's the save on that? I don't see that there is one. Okay, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna. What's the range? Uh, Um, it's myself. I'm casting it on myself. Within 30 feet of you. Thoughts? Okay. Uh, so yeah. Uh, you can search for thoughts within 30 feet. So it's slightly outside of your range. Um, but as you begin to cast the magic, you hear uh, a voice in your head. What languages do you speak? Me? Yes. Um, so, common, infernal, uh, shorts word, um, which is just sort, <laughs> shorts word, short sword. I can okay. speak to the sword. Um, thieves can't and under common. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, you hear a few languages that you don't understand. Um, and then you hear in common, I bring you a gift. Um, and we're going to hop back over to, uh, to kill dying real quick. What, what did you want to do there, buddy? Well, so they have me bound, right? Yes. Am I facing upwards at them? Like am I laying on my back or? Uh, I think you're laying on your side. Okay. So I'm going to look up out of the corner of my eye and cast Misty Step 30 feet above the closest celestial. Since I'm a big guy with a sword, I'm coming down, directly down, and hoping that would do some damage. 
All right. What's your spell save, DC? I'll, I'll give them a dexterity save and throw against that. Uh, it's only a 13. Okay. Well, there's always a chance. Uh, yeah, so you definitely do that. And then you fall on the ground and take 10 damage. Um, as you as you land uh, rather heavily on your side, um, have I freed myself this way? Uh, no, you you are you are still bound. Yeah. Um, they, they they like tied your hands and and things. Um, you just oh, teleported okay. up <laughs> and uh, did not land on one as it stepped out of the way. Um, <laughs> It was worth a shot. <laughs> it was. It was a good. It was a good idea. It was a good idea. Um, but as you land, um, it reaches down and pulls your sword from its sheath, and or picks it up off the ground, and uh, takes flight into the air. Wouldn't Excalibur fight back then? Oh, yeah, definitely. Exactly. You okay. you you hear it bukaking in uh, in in uh, in uh, protest. Okay. Um, and uh, the camera's going to cut back over to uh, the group on the roof. Um, and uh, yeah, Locrian, you, you've heard, I bring you a gift. Um, is this sinister or is this like genuine? Genuine. Or you can try to make, you can try to make an insight check if you want. But you just said genuine. <laughs> I, I thought you were asking the, the creature. Oh. I guess. Okay. That was a nat 20. Nice. Yeah, it seems like it is genuinely not coming here to harm you. Well, it seems like it has a purpose for coming here, but it's not to, it's not to kill you. This sounds... Okay. Um, cuz like the, the the question of the question of morality and, and moral relativity moral re relativity here is a uh, a thing because you know maybe they think they're they think they're the heroes of this story. Doesn't everyone? Um, mm -hmm. uh, usually. Um anyway. What, what is your gift? And I think I'm going to actually try to fly up and get within range of, like, the detect's thoughts mm -hmm. um, to see if I can actually, like, hear these things. Okay. Like, hear more than what I'm, I'm hearing from. And so I can hear more than what I am intended to hear. Okay. Um... Let's see, I'm just looking at stuff. Uh, well, it has telepathy. Um, uh, okay, so it says, uh, as it approaches, uh, tell your, your friends to stand down. I mean no harm at this time. You first. I'm attempting just, I'm, I'm flying down. Yeah, but then I gesture towards, like, the encroaching army, and I say, well, like... You notice that they are not firing at the moment. <sighs> My friends aren't firing either. And you just hear a chuckle. Um, and uh, it lands. And it says, you all should know, your friend has been captured. Darling, that's old news. Everyone knows that. And tomorrow, at noon, we will cleanse the land of its presence. As it we shall, each and every one of you. Can it? I hide while he's talking? Really gonna go and say it? That's not. It does give terrible presents. 
I swear, the last time we were giving gifts to each other, it was like they didn't even know each other. You go <laughs> right ahead and cleanse the land of its presence. He really needs that to learn a lot about it. Um, or you could just leave. That would be fine. Because we are not doing anything to you. You are... Your very presence is an affront against nature. Well, I mean, have you looked at nature recently? Who, who the hell is speaking for nature here? We it's speak to the divine will. Hey, is it? Is yes. it Will Wheaton? Can I, can I hide uh, while this conversation's happening and move behind the thing? Uh, you can definitely try. Okay. Thirty. Thirty. All right. Let me check <laughs> one thing. Um. Yeah, that's a nineteen on, on the die. That is nuts. Uh, let me see what it does. Okay. Um. Yeah, yeah, that is, uh, you, you, you feel very confidently hidden. Okay. Um, something real quick. Uh, is it safe to say that it seems like this conversation is not going anywhere productive? Uh, you see uh, the, uh, the seraphim uh, reach, reaching over to a, uh, a, uh, pouch at its side. So did you okay. just come here to yammer on and tell us about how you're going to kill us all so that we can have a terrible night's sleep? Or is there something useful that you've come to do? Because it's, like yeah, it's not like we couldn't figure it out it before you anyway. You surrender that... and your souls will be cleansed. We will, well, uh, well, our souls are going to get cleansed either way, right? I don't need a bath from you, my dude. I would say this. You have until noon, you have until 11.58 to surrender to us. And it chuckles, and you see it unwrap the uh, the package that it's holding, and you see the blade, Excalator, as it takes the, the blade in both hands. You see sparks of electricity and divine energy as it slowly bends the sword into a horseshoe shape and drops it at its feet. I want to do a thing now. Okay. Um, I have dual wielder, so uh -huh. I want to draw both rapiers uh, and attack at, at its wings, uh, double attack. Okay. And, um, you know, obviously not before the attack hits because I want it to be an actual sneak attack, but I'm still going to yell sneak attack once it's obvious that he's being attacked. Okay. Uh, sneak go attack. ahead and, uh, yeah, make an attack, make two attack rolls with advantage. Or make make an attack roll with advantage, and then we'll see if that hits or not. And then... Uh, uh, yeah. So, a 22 and a 26. Uh, yes, that will hit. Uh, so, first hit... Uh, is no, not that. Um, there it is. So six with the first one. Uh, offhand damage is four, and then mm -hmm. sneak attack damage, which I'm assuming only applies once. Yes, sneak attack only applies once per turn. Uh, is fifteen. So okay. Twenty-five damage in total. Uh, yeah. Uh, there seems to be. It's uh, you definitely. Uh, well. No, you didn't surprise it. It seems to have let itself be stabbed. And as uh, it looks to you right before the blades make contact, and there's something keeping the blades from penetrating as, as deep as they should. Okay. Um, and uh, it says, very well. You've made your choice. And begins to fly. 
How, what's its fly speed? Its fly speed is... Ow. Uh... Oh, uh, 30 feet. Oh, well... It's oddly slow. Can I take an attack of opportunity on it? Uh, I don't think you were in melee with it. Oh. I was sort of hoping that while this was all happening, Mm -hmm. Um, that the myconoids, that's any of the myconoids were close enough mm -hmm. to sort of like, you know, if they live all in here, that mm -hmm. maybe they could throw like some hammocks on it or something. I mean, like a net would be better, but we've established that they have created a bunch of hammocks. Mm -hmm. And they have pomegranates, right? These are the things we know about myconoids. Mm -hmm. um, so they I was like, sort of they like the that, hammocks, it's canon. Yes, that while I was talking, that I could be like in, that I could be like, can you guys come over here? But is that something that the um, seraphim would also be able to hear? Uh, it it has telepathy within sixty feet. Okay. Yeah. So it I'll probably go. would have noticed, and it's immune to the surprised condition. Okay. So which one's a net? I was unaware that they had names that could be pronounced. Ha 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 ha. Terrible. Oh, I felt the cancer <laughs> grow inside my lungs at that right at that moment. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, and from about 70 feet up, the seraphim looks down and shakes its head and says, When the sun is at its peak, this town shall be cleansed. Oh, yeah, yeah. It flies away. Go suck an egg. And uh, as it flies, you hear a uh, kind of deep, resigned sigh, and you realize that Bob is still standing next to you all. Hey, Bob, what's up? Uh, well, I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but uh, it looks like we might need a little bit of help. For what? Uh, follow me. I follow him. And Bob leads you all. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Bob leads you all uh, to uh, a, uh, a pantry where there is a uh, faded a can of uh, pureed tomatoes. Bob opens the can and uh, pulls out a key. Are you opening a can of whoop-ass, Bob? Metaphorically, yes. And um, uh, Bob walks over to uh, what appears to be a broom closet Unlocks it and uh, no, no, don't do it. opens the door. Bob, uh, remind me what you did before you were dead. No, I always like to tinker and build, and yeah, you know, I, I, I like to do stuff to make improvements to things. Did you work here? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh. You've got to talk to Buddy about changing the locks around here. My word. Uh, All right, what's in the we closet? Do not. Anyway. Um. Um, and in the closet, you see that this is no closet. This is a armory of untold magical uh, goodness, as it were. Uh, as many things as you could possibly desire. And in the far back corner of the room, you hear a voice that says, Well, it's about time somebody came back here. I was starting to get bored. Who the hell are you? And the figure steps forward. And you see behind an iron set of behind an iron set of bars, the Bone Lord. <laughs> and that's where we're going to call the session. Perfect, love it.
uh, I think before the Bone Lord speaks, just one quick thing. Yep. Mark just gets like dollar signs in her eyes mm-hmm. for a second. Then goes, oh no, no, wait. We're battle to fight. But that's like her instant reaction to seeing all the magical items. <laughs> hmm. And then snaps out of it. That was fantastic. Yep. Oh. Never mind. Uh, Let's all just die. <laughs> yep. So how this is going to work out mechanically is uh, you uh, you are all going to have uh, six points to spend um, and to to arm yourself with things from the armory. Uh, a common magic item is one point. An uncommon magic item is two points, and a rare magic item is three points. Um, whatever you want to pick is there for you to take. Um, and uh, so you can arm yourself with whatever you think you're going to need for the uh, conflicts coming ahead. Uh, and uh, over the course of the night, you're all going to level up to 12. Very nice. And I think we'll... that they get to pick items for me. Yes, they 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 can pick. Uh, we'll we'll say that they can grab a satchel of things for you, and we'll. Let you I pick. have message. I can... You I can totally send should. Message. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier. <laughs> well, you you would need sending for this message. Always only goes out to like a hundred feet. Oh come on, roll the pool, man. Hey, hey, it's Lord Random Lady Di, darling. What we're at the store, and we think we see some armor in your size. Are you a large or an extra large? Extra large. That's the cod piece size. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, that's where we're going to uh, pick things up, and we're going to wrap our campaign up next week with the climactic battle now that they have found a magical armory and where the Bone Lord has been imprisoned by Bob, apparently, <laughs> all this time. Uh, yeah, so... Bob. Uh, if we have any suggestions for a raid cry, please put those in the chat now. And uh, we're going to go back through and let each of our players tell you their favorite part of the game, who they are, and where you can find them. And we're going to start this time around with Locrian. Um, so, hi, I'm Kat and Schrodinger. Um, my suggestion for a raid cry would be, why don't we take the Black Feather Guild and move it somewhere else? <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty good. That is good. Um, and either that or the vampire mushroom people sitting around all day. That's a good one, too. Uh, anyway, um, so I'm Kat. Kat and Schrodinger, or Kat named Schrodinger in most places. Uh, I play Locrian. Um, you can find me next tomorrow for, um, I guess it's the penultimate episode of the vampire game, La Famille Boucher. Re? Yep. And, um, yeah, um, and I'm also doing, uh, is it, I can't remember if it's the second or last or last episode of, uh, uh oh, where the, things go stop the Friday, um, but uh, I'm in close of the that, that might be the finale, um, where we, oh no, we finally did finish, uh, defeating, uh, Marvolio the Unnamed, um, <laughs> And yes, it's the finale. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so one more week of that, and um, yeah, I think my favorite part was rolling that that strength check and, and getting a a nat one. Natty one. And um, <laughs> yeah, trying obviously trying to move the the um, castle and uh, just falling through the wall. That was a very very improv piece of comedy there that was it's improv goal and the dice cooperated that they did okay and calliope hi i'm calliope and you can find me at calliope um you can find me here next week and then i'll be taking a little break from streaming because i have to work on my phd but someday i'll come back i know um but um, okay, so my favorite thing, I did really love having Lady Di be so horrified to be in Bark's body. But I also was sad because that happened 
right in what was going to be a meaningful moment for Lady Di and Locrian. So, man, if you ship it, you got to let them back that time. We'll see. It's getting close. Yeah. Uh, but that was really fun. Thanks, Nebel. That was very silly. I just wish that she had punched Bark more. We all. We all. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, face. I'm, oh, there's Git. I'm Face. Um, you can find me on Twitter at GameFace. And I'm here next week um, for the last time um, for the show. And then my favorite part, um, I really enjoyed the uh, pomegranates and the rubber chicken steed situation. That was great. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, he'll die in. Uh, so I'm Hildayan. Uh You can find me here next week. Um, but my is I gotta give mad props to Bark for their stealth checks and <laughs> a lot of respect for that uh, sneak attack. It was a uh, on anybody else that would have been pretty devastating. <laughs> yep. Yep. As I'm, you know, you know, when you when you find things that can't be surprised, it's um kind of kind of hard to be a rogue. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, and Raven. Yeah. So, uh, my favorite part, um, a lot of really great moments. It's hard to pick a favorite one. Um, but I think it was everybody's reaction to Bob coming back you know, after fighting all the fires and just being like, I ran out of water and looking out at the city and seeing that it's like you know, half flooded. Yeah. Yeah. Bob had four bags of holding filled with water. Oh my uh, God. <laughs> yeah. So that is, uh, that, that was not a insubstantial amount of water that Bob used. <laughs> so, uh, pretty, the sea might be a few inches lower. I was going to say, it sounds like the tide went out a little bit early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, so yeah, I, th I think that was probably my favorite moment, but the whole thing was just amazing. Uh, I also really loved uh, Torino's escapades with the uh, with the whatchamacallums. Name escapes me at the moment. Um, Therapems? Yes, thank you. Um, and the really, really smart attempt at... Uh, Stabbing that that did not go well. <laughs> no. It was a good roll. It was a really good roll. It was a, that was, it was a good a, try, yeah. Good plan. It's just celestial um, beings with true sight and telepathy. It's hard, uh, hard to hide. You can find me next. Uh, tomorrow I'll be uh, producing La Femme Boucheri, um, which is uh, the, the vampire game that we were talking about. Um, and then I will be jamming uh, the penultimate of water um, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, uh, where things are getting very, very scary. Um, and we're going to find out kind of what's, what's really going on behind everything. Uh, so it's going to be good. And then, uh, Zan, what was your favorite part? Yeah, so uh, so I'm Zan. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a professional DM and content creator for D and D and a whole bunch of other systems out there. Uh, if you need to get a hold of me, you can find me at uh, twitter.com/slash insanitytrpg or uh, my website insanitygaming.com. Uh, and my favorite part was finally getting to show everyone that Bob has had the Bone Lord captive, uh, literally this entire game. No one questions Bob. No, no one is confused. No one suspects Bob of anything. Uh, I've been holding that one real close to my chest, and just and uh, it, it, I, I'm happy that it's finally been revealed that Bob has just been storing the Bone Lord because <laughs> it's Bob. What you gonna do? <laughs> um, yeah, that was probably my favorite part. So I've been been excited to to get that one off. Um, 
but yeah, thanks so much, y'all, for uh, for hanging out with us and watching this silly little D and D game. And we are uh, going to be live with the finale next week. Uh, in the meantime, you can catch me here tomorrow, running uh, La Famille Boucher, uh, where things are about to get. Uh, um, without spoiling too much, I think we could safely call it explosive in the city of New Orleans uh, in our uh, little vampire game. And I'll be uh i will certainly try not to oversleep for the water game this week um as, as i did as i did last week unfortunately um time zones and um yeah you can catch me on uh, brambleberry games on saturday and probably polish cryptid channel at oh yeah you can catch me on polish cryptid channel on sunday where i'll be starting a new vampire game uh tentatively titled shovelheads 101 um yeah so that's all my stuff uh raven go ahead and take us out yeah uh so we're gonna get raven over to the raid screen and uh we're gonna go raid uh, saito <coughs> excuse me fantastic streamer um she's doing a bunch of tabletop stuff definitely give her a follow if you're not doing so already uh we've got our raid cry uh, which is right there in chat. And then one final thank you to our sponsors, Fundamental RPG and Grind and Coffee Company. Uh, oh, <laughs> you, you, you beat me to it. Um, so yeah, if you go to grindingcoffee.co and use the code R-A-V-V-Y-N, you get 13% off your order. Um, and it's really good coffee. They actually roast it when you order it. Um, so uh, if, if you're not super familiar with coffee roasting, um, you have to let it sit for a couple days once you roast it um, before you can really grind it and, and brew it. Um, so it's pretty much about as fresh as you could possibly get. Um, and it's really tasty. I, I've tried uh, several different varieties of theirs and it's all really, really good. Um, so yeah, thank you again for everybody who watched. Thanks to the players, to Zan for running the game. Uh, and thanks to, uh, I believe it was Meeple who spent those uh, uh, guild coins on the, uh, the character swap. That was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, see you all tomorrow. Bye, everybody.